Hello everyone, good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, we're starting today a new article, uh, The Freedom. So in this series, uh, Bala Sulam articles, we finished the article, The Peace, and now we're moving on to The Freedom article. So you have a link to The Freedom article if you don't have the book, Kabbalah for Beginners. If you actually have the book, uh, sorry, Kabbalah for the student, if you actually have the book, it's on page 375, okay? Uh, so 375, uh, the freedom, and you have the link, as I mentioned. Of course, as usual, you can always ask questions uh, uh, on YouTube or Facebook or wherever you're watching this. And if you don't watch it live, you can also ask questions, pr uh, preferably on YouTube, because then I get a notification, and I can relate to that in the following lesson. And uh, that's it for now. Let's begin. So, the Freedom article. Baal Sulam uh, starts that with a quote from Midrash Shemot Rabbah. Charut, carved on the stones, because uh, the freedom in Hebrew you can say Charut and Charut. So, it's like a game of words, okay? That carved and the freedom are like the same uh, word, different uh, way of pronouncing it. So, charut, carved, on the stones, do not pronounce it charut, carved, but to, rather cherut, freedom, to show that they are liberated from the angel of death. Okay, I want them to say that uh, when the Torah was given, so this uh, Torah that was carved like on the stone, I'm, I'm speaking in uh, an external way, not to not with the internal meaning of that, but uh, the, uh, it gave the ability to be free from the angel of death. Okay, so this is like a really not so clear uh, sentence, and that's why the article is, to explain what uh, was said in that Midrash by other Kabbalists. Okay, let me just uh, make this a bit smaller, so you can actually see it. Nice, but now I cannot move it to the right. Something is weird here. Oh, that's better. Ah. Okay, the PDF is giving me problems. No, we met. Now I cannot move it to the right. This is better than the real thing. And let's try a different way. Sorry, technical things. Okay, now it's better, I hope. Okay, so these words, to be clarified, uh, these words need to be clarified because how is the matter of reception of the Torah related to one's liberation from death? Yeah, what does it mean? What's the connection? And what is a Torah anyway? Uh, is it that book or something else? And what, why is that... Why, if you are giving the Torah, you are liberated from the angel of death. Furthermore, once they have attained an eternal body that cannot die through the reception of the Torah, what does that mean? Is it this corporal a protein body or something else? How did they lose it again? Can the eternal became absent, become absent? Okay, so these are questions that are even less clear than the quote itself. Nice. So now, and that, but that's how Kabbalists usually start their articles. You see, always there's a problem. Like in the peace article, there was a problem, the question of why there is suffering in the world if the Creator is go good and benevolent. So you see that Kabbalists always start uh, the articles with a problem because it's like a challenge or like a, a vessel that you need to work with, and then you can come uh, into a fulfillment or attainment or whatever. So, freedom of will. To understand the sublime concept freedom from the angel of death, we must first understand the concept of freedom as it is in normally understood by all of humanity. It is a general view that freedom is deemed a natural law, which applies to all of life. Thus, we see that animals that fall into captivity die when we rob them of their freedom. This is a true testimony that providence does not accept the enslavement of any creature. It is with good, good reason that humanity has been struggling for the past several, several hundred years to obtain a certain measure of freedom of the individual. Okay, so we see that freedom as a concept or as a 
idea is something that actually, actually nature fights for, okay? So if you try to deprive that of a creature, he fights back, he's miserable, uh, he wants to be free. And you see how humanity developed, and, and that's why all the big empires that wanted to control... Um, that wanted to control other nations did, never, did, never did understand why those primitive nature want to accept the enlightenment and the greatness of the empire and insist on being free, okay, and being like this primitive free. Because this wish, this desire is much stronger than a lot of other things. And also that's true for humanity in general. So we see how... Uh, how uh, wars for freedom from the French Revolution, for example, that actually uh, drowned half of Europe in a lot of blood uh, in order to attain freedom or the freedom uh, or, or the women's right movement or the slavery movement and of course the, uh, the civil war in the, in the States are all examples for people fighting for freedom. Okay, so uh, that's pretty clear that freedom is something big, okay? Yet, this concept expressed in the word freedom remains unclear, okay? So we're fighting for it, we're dying for it, we pass laws for that, we go to rallies again uh, in order to attain freedom. But what is freedom, actually? So, yet this concept expressed in that word freedom remains unclear. And if we de delve into the meaning of that word, there will be almost nothing left. For before you seek the freedom of the individual, you must assume that any individual in and of itself has the quality called freedom, meaning that one can act according to one's own free choice, okay? So, if I fight so much for freedom, like freedom from the king, freedom to smoke drugs, freedom uh, or to do other drugs, uh, freedom uh, you know, not to be a slave or whatever, I'm assuming that I can actually be free or that I can actually uh, operate or act according to one to my own free choice. Can I? That's the big question, okay? Okay. Pleasure and pain. However, when we examine the acts of an individual, we shall find them compulsory. He is compelled to do them and has no freedom of choice. In a sense, he is like a stew cooking on a stove. It has no choice but to cook. And it must cook because providence has harnessed life with two chains, pleasure and pain. And the living creatures have no freedom, freedom of choice to choose pain or reject pleasure. And man's advantage over animals is that he can aim to a remote goal, meaning to agree to a certain amount of current pain out of choice of future benefit or pleasure or pleasure to be attained after some time. But in fact, there is no more than a seemingly commercial calculation here, where the future benefit or pleasure seems preferable and advantage, advan advantageous to the agony they are suffering from the pain they have agreed to assume presently. There is only a matter of deduction here that they deduct the pain and suffering from the anticipated pleasure and there remains some surplus. Okay, so this is uh, actually the basic, uh, how do you say tune? Uh, let me check that. That's interesting. How do you say that word? Tune. Uh, I probably know that, but I forgot. It's too early in the morning. Uh, tune. Argument. Okay, argument. Okay, so also in philosophy you say argument, that I want to argue in favor or something. Yeah, I guess you can. Okay, so the main argument against this concept of free choice, uh, according to Kabbalah, or that examines and studies the laws of nature, is that if you... Uh, if you actually study the, the laws of nature, you see that every creature is a will to receive. Will to receive what? Will to receive pleasure. And because it has, it's a will to receive, it, it must, compulsory, yeah, uh, without any choice to uh, avoid or to run away from suffering and to be uh, drawn or chased or uh, wishing to receive pleasure. 
okay? And, and through these uh, two uh, reigns of pain and pleasure, pleasure, that's how you write it, right? It's a problem that this drawing board doesn't have autocorrect pleasure. Yeah, that's a problem with teaching in another language, because if you make uh, spelling mistakes, you seem dumb. And then it also uh, re projects on the, what you, start, you teach. That's a challenge, because we are, we are programmed to look down on people. That's, what, that's why immigrants mostly have problems. Because it doesn't matter if you have a PhD, but you kind of don't have the language, then you are immediately being downgraded to a six-year-old uh, until uh, the people can actually go through the barrier of language and look inside. But that's not only, that's a common problem of many people. Part of the problem from Babylon that we were separated to many uh, different languages because of our ego. So again, back to our point. So uh, we are actually being a... Uh, controlled or managed completely by nature and we don't we know that all, also today from studies uh, uh, of brain studies that we can actually measure and see that there are so many seconds uh, between the action that a person takes and the sensation or the decision it comes to in his brain and it and and it is in that order meaning first the action then the decision so there's a question about free choice also today in modern science, but in Kabbalah we're talking about way, way back that actually Kabbalah say, hey, we don't have a free choice. Why? Because we must chase pleasure and we must avoid pain. And we have no saying about that and nothing we can do about that. That's how we are programmed. And the only difference between animals and, and uh, humans, and that's also something that needs to be understood, uh, is that humans have a cessation of time. So they can actually experience pleasure or pain compared to the past, the, the present and the future. And that's, why, uh, and that's why we can actually do a calculation towards the future. Okay? Animals don't have that. Even if, even if an animal actually uh, saves food or hides it underground for winter or whatever, uh, for the future so-called, uh, you can actually say, yeah, it also gives up uh, some pleasure in the present in order to do that for the future. That's instinct operating, okay? But we can do actually, we can actually use the perception of time as humans uh, going against our instincts. And that's why we are sometimes willing to uh, enslave many years of our life. Let's say we take a student loan if we're in the States. <laughs> which is like selling your life to the devil, uh, in order to earn more money in the future, okay? Uh, and we do that all the time. Uh, also, actually, when we go to school, but this is like my, our parents make us, but we also give up many uh, years of our uh, life. Instead of playing, we need to learn, do stuff in order to have a better future. But in the end, it's all about a calculation of pain and pleasure. So... Sorry to be, to be the one who tells you that, but if, for example, you, you feel that you don't know what to do, you really have a hard choice. Should you go to a trip to India or to China on your next vacation? Or should you study uh, ele uh, electricity engineering? Or should you study uh, politics science? Or should you marry uh, Kelly? Or should you marry Diana? So it's only... It's not a free choice, it's only lack of uh, information. Because if you knew that if you go to China, you'll have the best trip ever, you'll enjoy every moment, you like the food, you like the places, you like the people. And if you go to uh, India, the moment you land, you'll eat something on the street, you get diarrhea, you go to a hospital and you immediately need to come back home. Uh, or if you know that if you marry Kelly, you have the perfect life, she will love you more and more every day. Every day you fall in love uh, again and again. She will treat you like uh, the most beloved, uh, warm wife. And she, every time you'll come home, if she'll be home, she'll be smiling to you. And the food will be ready and everything will be nice. And if you marry Diana, she'll make you miserable and she'll take the, the life out of you and she'll really look down on you and you feel like uh, 
not like a human being and you'll lose any self-confidence you ever had and you'll curse every moment home and you'll try to stay in the office to late hours and even after you get divorced you'll lose all of your property etc etc so there's no question where should i go to the next vacation or where or whom should i marry okay it's only a lack of information lack of uh, data about what will give me more pleasure or what will give me uh, less pain but the moment i have all the data i have no free choice <laughs> i must operate in the way that i'm programmed to operate okay so i hope that is clear so we have a contradiction again how surprisingly between the fact that freedom is such a high concept that humanity fights so much willing to sacrifice lives of millions in order to attain that and also the individual is willing to sacrifice his life uh, to attain freedom on the other hand we have no free choice whatsoever okay so let's see what how we proceed from here okay thus only the pleasure is extended and so it is sometimes happens that we are tormented because we did not find that pleasure to be the surplus we had hoped for compared to the agony we suffered hence we are in def deficit just as merchants do okay so uh, <laughs> this is this is a problem that we as humans have more more over animals that animals they just uh, if they choose wrongly, they'll suffer in the present more than uh, they could have uh, had pleasure. But uh, that was present simple progressive something, right? Have had. That's part of the English you study somewhere in the. Doesn't matter. Uh, so, and humans have a harder problem because if I made the wrong choice and then I come to a future moment and I see that. Uh, I actually got less than what I expected, then not only do I have less now, but all the investment I did, all the sacrifice, everything I gave up in order to attain that moment, it's all also going to minus. So I have like double minus, okay? That's not nice. And this is a privilege that is a... How do you say? A privilege that is kept only for humans. Okay, I hope that's how you say that. And when all is said and done, there is no difference here between the man and animal. And if that is the case, there is no free choice whatsoever, but a pulling force drawing them toward any bypassing pleasure and rejecting them from painful circumstances. And providence leads them to the every place it chooses by means of these two forces, without asking their opinion in that matter. In the matter. Moreover, even determining the type of pleasure and benefit are entirely out of one's own free choice. Okay, that's even crazier because even to determine, okay, so no problem. All my life I'm chasing pleasure. I'm doing a calculation. I must take the bigger pleasure over the lesser pleasure or the less ple pain over the more pain. But at least determining what is pleasure, okay, what is pleasure? Is pleasure for me a vacation? Is pleasure for me do, to study something new, to be a politician, to be a gangster, to be a cannibal, to do drugs, to watch a, a sports on TV, to play video games? What is pleasure? I don't know, to do macrame, to, do, to, to be an athlete. What is pleasure? Can I at least determine that in my life? Do I, am I at least free in choosing that? Well, again, sorry to disappoint you, but you cannot. Uh, even determining the type of pleasure and benefit are entirely out of one's own free choice, but follow the will of others as they want and not he. For example, I sit, I dress, I speak and I eat, okay? The fact that I sit on a chair, not on a floor, that I dress the way I dress and I'm not naked right now, the way I'm speaking and the way I need to speak and how I'm eating, I do all this not because I want to sit that way or to talk that way or dress that way or eat that way, but because others want me to see, dress, talk and eat that way. It all follows the desire and fancy of society, not my own free will. Furthermore, in most cases, I do all this against my will, for I would be a lot more comfortable behaving simply without any burden, going to work with my pajamas or, I don't know, or not to have to speak politically correct in lessons of Kabbalah 
for American audience. But I'm chained with iron shackles in all my movements to the fanciest and manners to the fences and manners of others, which make up the society. So you tell me, where is my freedom of will? Okay, that's the big question. So we see that also the answer to the question, what is pleasure? This is completely given into to society. Through education, through a, a moral, through a, a, the media, but we are completely through lo to laws we are completely controlled by society that determines to us what is pleasure and that's why some people grow up liking uh, uh, liking mcdonald's and other people prefer to eat cockroaches on a stick uh, in honey roasted on the street okay and that's society okay and we know that for example, we know that if, for example, somebody kills somebody else, he goes to on, on trial, and we find out that in his uh, childhood he was uh, abused by his parents and whatever, and he grew up in a bad neighborhood and a bad school, and he joined a gang in the age of six or something, and then we understand that uh, it wasn't really his free choice. And but, but this is very delicate, because if you take this point of no free choice to the extreme, there is no point of all the court system and everything, because how can you punish a person for things he completely didn't do? Either he's uh, programmed by his internal program or by society telling him what is pleasure. And these two, uh, co and the combination of the internal program of attaining pleasure and society telling me what is pleasure, uh, deprives me completely of free choice and so I'm not responsible for any action I do. So how can you judge me or do anything with, for, with me? So no point in court system or jails or whatever. So you see, these, these are big questions. So you tell me, where is my freedom of will? On the other hand, if we assume that will has no freedom, then we are like machines operating and creating through external forces which force them to act this way. This means that we are all incars incarcerated in the prison of providence, which using these two chains, pleasure and pain, pushes and pulls us to its will, to where it sees fit. It turns out that there is no such thing as selfishness in the world, since no one here is free or stands on his own two feet. I am not the owner of the act and I am not the performer because I want to perform, but I am performed upon in a compul compulsory manner and without my awareness. Thus reward and punishment become extinct. Yeah, Because I succeeded in life, or I don't know, like uh, Bill Gates succeeded in life because he got the right internal program meaning he has a big desire for pleasure and society gave him what is pleasure and he went, went out and performed that and he succeeded or Jeff Bezos or I don't know what or on the other or, or, Tr or Donald Trump on the other hand if I go and become a criminal or a, a homeless that's also not me so there is no reward and punishment for anything I do so how can you live in that especially in a capitalistic kind of uh, a society that tells me that I'm a self-made man I, I didn't made, made anything. I was made. So there is no self-made man uh, idea. So what are we? Are we socialists? Oh my God. Uh, no. Even socialists believe that there is a free choice. So we, we're even worse than that. Question. Okay, so th these are more questions and answers to the moment. And it is quite odd, not only for the Orthodox, who believe in his providence and can rely on him and trust that he aims only for the best in this conduct. Okay, so if you're a religious person, you can say, yeah, there is a creator. He does everything, he did everything, he will do everything. Not, nothing to worry. We're just puppets on his show. Good. And so I'm relaxed, I'm calm, and I can go to sleep. It is even stranger for those who believe in nature, since according to the above we are all incarcerated by the chains of blind nature with no awareness or accountability. So we're just like animals or robots or something operated by nature if I don't believe in a creator. 
And we, the chosen species with reason and knowledge, have become a toy in the hands of the blind nature, which, lead, which leads us astray and who knows where. Okay, so that's a good point to stop at. More questions than answers. Let me see if you have more questions in addition to Barcelona's. Wow, that's a lot of things in the chat. Wow, also on Facebook. I hope it's you talking between you and not questions. Good morning. I only know ancient. Is that okay? What do you mean by ancient? Okay, Jonathan, sorry. I don't know what you mean by ancient. Uh, Stevie, knowing that we have no free will, how should a person conduct himself? That was That's exactly my question. Good question, Stevie. We'll probably look into that next lesson. Uh, okay. That was the only question on Facebook. Now, uh, hello, what the relation between Angel of Death and the Kli of Malchut? What, Blake? Angel of Death, first of all, we haven't talked about Kli or Malchut, so these are concepts that we haven't touched up on in this article, so better, st uh, better put them aside. Now, as for the Angel of Death, that's the question Basram started with, and we need a whole article to go through in order to come to that understanding in the end. And Black is asking, isn't the creator the only one that has true free will? Does he? It's like the law of nature. That, and he, he has a very specific goal, and this goal doesn't change. It's the same from the moment of creation to the end of creation. So what free choice does he, does he have? He just operates in one action. And so that's a question. Can we change what we find is painful and pleasurable? That's a question. How can we do that? Because if you are programmed by society and you are every moment under the influence of society, how can you actually change what you see as pleasure and pain? Uh, do we have to uh, understand the whole system of reality in order to gain free will? Maybe, I don't know. Question is, do I know the, all of the laws? What free will do I do I have? If I know exactly how the laws operate, I don't have a free will if to fly or to walk on the earth. I understand that there is gravity, and that's why, that's how I operate. So, uh, or even without understanding. So it's a question: A is understanding bringing bringing us closer? Understanding nature or reality bring, brings us closer to a free choice. And if knowing the laws actually makes us more free or less free, because we saw that in our world, what we relate to as freedom of choice is lack of knowing. And so it's ignorance. So we call ignorance, like in this drawing, okay, and the example I gave about, about the vacations and who to marry, we call ignorance actually freedom of choice. Okay. I heard theories of mentalism on the power. Okay, no question here, but yeah, uh, actually, maybe something to take out of it. Uh, maybe something uh, to get out of it is that uh, if we have a manual and we understand nature, then uh, we can operate according to that. But then, what is the free choice in, in that aspect, if there is a free choice? Okay, and okay, this is a discussion. We don't see a question mark, so we don't see a question mark. So, Christopher is asking So, should we relinquish determination of what is pleasure if it's subjective? Uh, should we relinquish determination of what is pleasure if it's subjective? What is the question? Let me understand it. If pleasure is subjective, okay, so everyone defines pleasure differently according to its education and environment, whatever. Uh, should you relinquish that? You cannot. You are, you are controlled by it. So you must receive pleasure. Try not to receive pleasure. And there are things just like sleep that unconsciously your body will fall. You cannot control that. Uh, food, water, also, you can just minimize it to a 
to a certain level, but still you must uh, receive this pleasure in order to uh, to exist. And also you see that if people don't, have, if they have a bigger desire above this uh, sleep, eat kind of desire, sex, whatever, uh, you see that if they have a more developed desire and they don't receive pleasure and they feel this emptiness, emptiness or what modern society call depression, they must receive some kind of drugs or something or they just kill themselves or even worse they kill others because they like project their internal suffering on others and violently try to change reality hoping that it will create a, an internal change. Uh, so we are contro controlled by uh, by pleasure and pain and nothing we can actually do that. Uh, okay, that's it. I guess no more questions. So we'll continue next lesson, hopefully this uh, Thursday morning Israel time or uh, Wednesday evening in New York time. Uh, see you uh, next time and by then have a great day, great evening and take care. Bye bye.